March 19th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Deuteronomy chapters 3 and 4 from the Old Testament. Next we set out on the route to Bashan, but King Og of Bashan and his whole army came out to meet us in battle at Edrei. The Lord, however, said to me, Don't be afraid of him, because I have already given him his whole army and his land to you. You will do to him exactly what you did to King Sion of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon. So the Lord our God did indeed give over to us King Og of Bashan and his whole army, and we struck them down until not a single survivor was left. We captured all his cities at that time. There was not a town we did not take from them. Sixty cities, all the region of Argob, the dominion of Og and Bashan. All of these cities were fortified by high walls, gates, and locking bars. In addition, there were a great many open villages. We put all of these under divine judgment, just as we had done to King Sihon of Heshbon, every occupied city, including women and children. But all the livestock and plunder from the cities we kept for ourselves. So at that time, we took the land of the two Amorite kings in the Transjordan from Wadi Arnon to Mount Hermon. The Sidonians called Hermon Syrian, and the Amorites call it Sinar. All the cities of the plateau, all of Gilead and Bashan, as far as Salaka and Edrei, cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan. Only King Og of Bashan was left of the remaining Rephaites. It is noteworthy that his sarcophagus was made of iron. Does it not, indeed, still remain in Rabbath of the Ammonites? It is thirteen and a half feet long and six feet wide, according to standard measure. This is the land we brought under our control at that time, the territory extending from Aurora by the Wadi Arnon and half the Gilead Hill Country with its cities I gave to the Reubenites and Gadites. The rest of Gilead and all of Bashan, the kingdom of Og, I gave to half the tribe of Manasseh, all the region of Argob, that is, all Bashan, is called the land of Rephraim. Jair, son of Manasseh, took all the Argob region as far as the border with the Gershites and Maacathites, namely Bashan, and called it by his name, Havoth Jair, which it retains to this very day. I gave Gilead to Maker. To the Reubenites and Gadites, I allocated the territory extending from Gilead as far as Wadi Arnon, the exact middle of the Wadi was a boundary all the way to the Wadi Jabbok, the Ammonite border. The Arabah and the Jordan River were also a border. From the Sea of Chinnereth to the Sea of the Arabah, that is the Salt Sea, beneath the watershed of Pisgah to the east. At that time I instructed you as follows. The Lord your God has given you this land for your possession. You warriors are to cross over before your fellow Israelites equipped for battle. But your wives, children, and livestock, of which I know you have many, may remain in the cities I have given you. You must fight until the Lord gives your countrymen victory as he did you, and they take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving them on the other side of the Jordan River. Then each of you may return to his own territory that I have given you. I also commanded Joshua at the same time, You have seen everything the Lord your God did to these two kings. He will do the same to all the kingdoms where you are going. Do not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God will personally fight for you. Moreover, at that time, I pleaded with the Lord. O oh Lord God, you have begun to show me your greatness and strength. What God in heaven or earth can rival your works and mighty deeds? Let me please cross over to see the good land on the other side of the Jordan River, this good hill country, and the Lebanon. But the Lord was angry at me because of you and would not listen to me. Instead, he said to me, Enough of that. Do not speak to me any more about this matter. Go up to the top of Pisgah and take a good look to the west, north, south, and east, for you will not be allowed to cross the Jordan. Commission Joshua and encourage and strengthen him because he will lead these people over and will enable them to inherit the land you will see. So we settled down in the valley opposite Beth Peor. Now Israel, pay attention to the statutes and ordinances I am about to teach you, 
so that you might live and go on to enter and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. Do not add a thing to what I command you, nor subtract from it, so that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I am delivering to you. You have witnessed what the Lord did at Baal Peor, how he eradicated from your midst everyone who followed Baal Peor. But you who remain faithful to the Lord your God are still alive to this very day, every one of you. Look, I have taught you statutes and ordinances just as the Lord my God told me to do, so that you might carry them out in the land you are about to enter and possess. So be sure to do them, because this will testify of your wise understanding to the people who will learn of all these statutes and say, Indeed, this great nation is a very wise people. In fact, what other great nation has a God so near to them like the Lord our God whenever we call on him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this whole law that I am about to share with you today? Again, however, pay very careful attention, lest you forget the things you have seen and disregard them for the rest of your life. Instead, teach them to your children and grandchildren. You stood before the Lord your God at Horeb, and he said to me, Assemble the people before me, so that I can tell them my commands. Then they will learn to revere me at all the days they live in the land, and they will instruct their children. You approached and stood at the foot of the mountain, a mountain ablaze to the sky above it, and yet dark with a thick cloud. Then the Lord spoke to you from the middle of the fire. You heard speech, but you could not see anything, only a voice was heard. And he revealed to you the covenant he has commanded you to keep, the Ten Commandments, written them on two stone tablets. Moreover, at that same time, the Lord commanded me to teach you statutes and ordinances for you to keep in the land which you are about to enter and possess. Be very careful then, because you saw no form at the time the Lord spoke to you at Horeb from the middle of the fire. I say this so you will not corrupt yourselves by making an image in the form of any kind of figure. This includes the likeness of a human male or female, any kind of land animal, any bird that flies in the sky, anything that crawls on the ground, or any fish in the deep waters of the earth. When you look up to the sky and see the sun, moon, and stars, the whole heavenly creation, you must not be seduced to worship and serve them. For the Lord your God has assigned them to all the people of the world. You, however, the Lord has selected and brought from Egypt that iron smelting furnace to be his special people as you are today. But the Lord became angry with me because of you and vowed that I would never cross the Jordan nor enter the good land that he is about to give you. So I must die here in this land. I will not cross the Jordan, but you are going over and will possess that good land. Be on guard so that you do not forget the covenant of the Lord your God that he has made with you, and that you do not make an image of any kind, just as he has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire. He is a jealous God. After you have produced children and grandchildren and have been in the land a long time, if you become corrupt and make an image of any kind and do other evil things before the Lord your God, then enrage him. I invoke heaven and earth as witnesses against you today that you will surely and swiftly be removed from the very land you are about to cross the Jordan to possess. You will not last long there because you will surely be annihilated. Then the Lord will scatter you among the peoples and there will be very few of you among the nations where the Lord will drive you. There you will worship gods made by human hands, wood and stone that can neither see, hear, eat, or smell. But if you seek the Lord your God from there, you will find him, if indeed you seek him with all your heart and soul. In your distress, when all these things happen to you in the latter days, if you return to the Lord your God and obey him, for he is a merciful God, he will not let you down or destroy you, for he cannot forget the covenant with your ancestors that he confirmed by oath to them. Indeed, ask about the distant past, starting from the day God created humankind on the earth, and ask from one end of heaven to the other whether there has ever been such a great thing as this or even a rumor of it. Have a people ever heard the voice of God speaking from the middle of fire as you yourselves have and live to tell about it? 
or has God ever before tried to deliver a nation from the middle of another nation, accompanied by judgment, signs, wonders, war, strength, power, and other very terrifying things like the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? You have been taught that the Lord alone is God. There is no other besides him. From heaven he spoke to you in order to teach you, and on earth he showed you his great fire, from which you also heard his words. Moreover, because he loved your ancestors, he chose their descendants, who followed them and personally brought you out of Egypt with his great power, to dispossess nations greater and stronger than you, and brought you here this day to give you their land as your property. Today realize and carefully consider that the Lord is God in heaven, above and on earth below, there is no other Keep his statutes and commandments that I am setting forth today so that it may go well with you and your descendants and that you may enjoy longevity in the land that the Lord your God is about to give you as a permanent possession. Then Moses selected three cities in the Transjordan toward the east. Anyone who accidentally killed someone without hating him at the time of the accident could flee to one of those cities and be safe. These cities are Bezer in the desert plateau for the Reubenites, Ramoth in Gilead for the Gadites, and Golan in Bashan for the Manassehites. This is the law that Moses set before the Israelites. These are the stipulations, statutes, and ordinances that Moses spoke to the Israelites after he had brought them out of Egypt, in the Transjordan, in the valley opposite Beth Peor, in the land of King Sion, of the Amorites who lived in Heshbon. It is he whom Moses and the Israelites attacked after they came out of Egypt. They possessed his land and that of King Og of Bashan, both of whom were Amorite kings in the Transjordan to the east. Their territory extended from Aurora at the edge of the Arnon Valley as far as Mount Sion, that is Hermon, including all the Arabah of the Transjordan in the east to the Sea of the Arabah beneath the watershed of Pisgah. God, some of my favorite words from the Bible are in this chapter. God, today I pray for the people who feel like they have done things that you will never ever allow them to come into a relationship with you. That they can't step foot into a church or listen to your words or even pray to you because of something that they have done. If that was the case, what would be the point that you would sacrifice your only son? You seek relationships. You seek reconciliation. You desire for all of us to be swaddled inside of your, your very loving, merciful, grace-filled arms. In your distress, when all these things happen to you, if you return to the Lord your God and obey him, for he is a merciful God, he will not let you down or destroy you, for he cannot forget the covenant with your ancestors. God, today I just thank you for your faithfulness. You promise us a lot of things. And you have never, ever, in all the years of the world, <laughs> have broken any of those promises. So why would you start now? The Bible says, if we return to you as obedient children, as people who are asking forgiveness, pure from the heart forgiveness for the things that we've done, you will be standing there with open arms, allowing us to not only come into relationship with you, but to move forward in that relationship, healing all of those wounds, everything in the past becoming white as snow, white as snow. God, thank you for the incredible gift of your son, Jesus Christ. There is such a pain inside of me that your son had to die because I am a sinful person and there's part of me that is so incredibly thankful of that sacrifice and so incredibly blessed that I know no matter what has happened in my past that I can still come to you ask for forgiveness and all of it not some but every single last piece of it is completely forgiven by you not even remembered anymore 
Here you promise that you will never let us down, nor destroy us. How many of us have had relationships where we've messed up and we've gone back to that person and asked forgiveness, and yet that person, out of vindictiveness or spite or jealousy or anger or revenge, has come after us again or said mean or hurtful things to us or set out to even destroy us. But you, our God, will never do that to us. That's not what you seek from us. You seek our love, pure and simple as that. God, thank you for all of your promises that you've made in this amazing book that you gave us. And thank you for being faithful beyond anything that we experience here on this earth and allowing us to see what perfection and true love really is. In your son's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>